Imagine a world where creatives always have a key to the city. Use promo code 3PLAY and get three signature notebook ones for only $20. That's T-H-R-E-E-P-L-A-Y. This and more are available exclusively at knewamsterdam.com. Newamsterdam.com. Welcome, citizen. Um, I didn't really give a whole lot of thought about how to start this episode, but I do know that it starts with, Mm -hmm. welcome to Crime Crazy, the weekly true crime podcast with Erin Klein and Jordan Middleton, where we prove that we know nothing about our legal system, but we're still crazy for a good true crime story. Even the ones that we told last week and nobody got to hear. (laughs) It was very tragic and Erin did everything she could. It was like a, it was like Oh, like when a surgeon comes out and is like, we tried everything. We did everything we could. Yeah, that was you with our that episode. Was, that's really what it felt like, too. <laughs> oh, my God. Well, because I was on the plane editing that episode for yeah. hours. I know. I thought then... I felt really bad at the end of the night when oh you're like, gosh. I can't. <laughs> yeah. Well, and then we're in the airport and I was like, okay, so I didn't get to finish, you know, whatever. I'll have mm-hmm. to work on it because we had a layover. Yeah. And David, I said, let's, let's walk around and shop. Like we just sat on a plane for like six hours. Yeah. We're really tired and didn't get any sleep last night. He's like, no, you have to sit down and edit the podcast. So we went and sat and edited oh for like God. another hour. Yeah. And then it still didn't work. So sorry about last week, guys. Yeah. That episode was, um, had an abrupt ending. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, it happens. It does. It did make research for this week really easy Mm -hmm. since I'm just going to cheat and do the same thing over again. Well, that was our whole point was for you to do that again. I know. And mine is extremely lighthearted and funny. I'm really glad. I I, (laughs) think that was uh, good planning. Yeah. (laughs) So that's why when I asked you, I'm like, you're doing the same one, right? (laughs) Then I knew it like what I shouldn't do. And right, right. So this is the first episode, guys, that you'll hear that I already know her story. It's true. You know my story and all of the details. It's Maybe true. even more than I'm going to do this time because yeah, I did kind of go on and really on and long on last and time. on. Mm-hmm. Maybe our sound system was just rebelling. Maybe. It was like, mm, no. Yeah. That's, that's oh, too much like listening. when the music plays at the Oscars. They're like playing you off. So yeah. Your speech stops. Yeah. <laughs> this year, but everyone was just like, you can play that music. I'm going to keep talking. Nice. <laughs> I'm not done yet. <laughs> well, that is a little how I feel about this topic too, though. Yes. Like, yes. I'm just going to keep talking. So... In case you didn't read the show description last week, although I feel like if ever anybody read a show description, it was when they listened to the episode that was 20 minutes long and then it suddenly cuts off and then they probably <laughs> went to the website to look. That's um, funny. Anyway, we're going to cover a school shooting mm-hmm. because we have things to say. Yeah. And I was going to make some nasty comment about the school system here, but I won't. Yeah. Um, but there, there are definitely things that need to be said. And I think, too, that this one I'm going to talk about Columbine and I think that it's um I don't know I think it's a really important one it was one that was very impactful like for me personally Mm -hmm. um and well as we discovered last time when we were talking about it I had all these like realizations uh that (laughs) it affected me personally too and I didn't even know because I was so little right but that was Jordan saying I'm old by the way um Okay, I was in, like, school, so, I, you know, we shared that. <laughs> we she was in, in school. Schooling. I was, like, the same age as these mass murderers, but, yeah. you know, whatever. Um, actually, I was thinking about it more today as I was going through all of the notes again and trying to figure out what I wanted to actually go through this time. And, mm-hmm. um, yeah, there were some things that I had just totally forgotten about until I went back through it for, like, the fourth time yeah. this morning. And Oh, wow. So. Okay. Anyway, so unnecessary trigger warning. Mm -hmm. We're going to talk about the school shooting and it's brutal and horrible and not particularly funny. No. Um, So if you want to skip to the end, Jordan's going to tell us a funny crime story. I was going to say, you could skip to my story. Right. If you wanted to just hear only Jordan two weeks in a row, (laughs) you could skip to the end. (laughs) Columbine happened when I was a junior in high school. I think we found out I was like, First grade or something? Or second? What do we talk? I forget. Are you 10 years younger than me? You are, right? Wait, how old are you? 35. 
Oh, yeah, I'm 25. Okay, good. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so that should make the math really easy. I was because, in 11th grade. You were in first grade. Because Toby <laughs> is 20 years younger than me. Exactly. I'm 30 years older than Toby. That is the first time I've noticed that I'm 30 years older than my kid. <laughs> <laughs> well, oh. I mean... You would have noticed one day he's your kid. <laughs> right? I just. No, because remember I, I really said. thought about oh, it. Oh, man, he's going to turn 21. I'm going to be 41. No, no, to hang on the 41 year old. And I was like, well, I want to because Mike's my favorite guy. <laughs> that's right. That's this was right. a while ago. So, yeah. Uh, yeah. Well, I'll be 51. So I'll be over half a century old at that point. Yeah, but you'll be in that, like, fuck it, who cares stage. So, anyway, oh, I thought we I was have, We have an there. important story. I'm sorry. I okay. distracted everybody. <laughs> it's okay. I think we're just avoiding it. Yeah. And now there's like paper rustling noises because I just dropped all of my notes. Small toilet right. my cracker. Right. <laughs> yeah, we had, to, we had to pause. <laughs> Jordan was still was eating just her I'm sorry, everybody. <laughs> all right. So, anyway, I was a junior. Um, and so it changed a lot of things for us because I think that we were sort of a similar kind of school district. Um sort of boring and in the middle of nowhere but like not somewhere you'd expect this to happen and sort of the same kind of population and that and so it it sort of hit close to home even though it was not close to home at all yeah so anyway um so I'm gonna do some background and then just kind of go through the events of that day and then we can chat about it um so it all started probably back in 1996. So there are two characters in our story. And of course, I feel a little bit like everybody knows this already, except that even though it had a huge impact on me, I didn't yeah. know the actual story, I think because I was just young enough at I the didn't time at I didn't all. pay attention. Yeah. Yeah. I knew the I knew the gist. I knew that Harris and Klebold walked into a school and killed a bunch of people yeah. and that was about it. Mm-hmm. 1996, Harris creates a private website on AOL. Remember AOL? Oh, yeah. (laughs) (laughs) And our audience ditches us. They made it past the trigger warning and they got to the dial-up sounds and it was too much. Everyone needs to remember. Right. So um, he creates, he's a, he's a student. He creates a website on AOL. Of course, nobody reads it because it's AOL in the mid nineties. And (laughs) even if you, I mean, it's not like there was Google with everything so wonderfully indexed and searchable Mm -hmm. and everything else. Nobody would ever find it. Um, But he made it to host levels for the video game that he was into, which Mm -hmm. was Doom. Did you ever play Doom? I played a lot of Doom. Did you? I have not played Doom. What? I don't know. Oh, man. I remember it being a thing, but it was not. It wasn't a thing in my world. I think it was in my house because my brother and sister were the same age as you when this was all going on. So that was very popular. So we had it. Hmm. Mm -hmm. No, I never. I don't even really know. I mean, I wasn't good at it, but. Well, apparently he was good enough to build levels. Yeah. Um, the rumor was that the levels that he built and had on his website were supposed to be like a map of his school with his plans to Mm -hmm. murder everybody. Yeah. But the ones that were still in existence after the murders were not that. They were just random levels. Okay. Um, except there was one that he uploaded, like, I think the day before the attacks Mm -hmm. that could have actually been a map of his school, but he uploaded it at school, which is a little strange. Um, but he, it it was lost. Whatever happened to it, nobody ever got to see it or nobody, I don't know. So it could have been a map of the school, but it makes no difference. Um, but the other thing that he put on his website, he had a blog and on this blog, it started, you know, back in 96, it was all jokes entries about his parents complaining about people talking about people um things about school and friends which was one of the things about this that I guess I probably had known since but definitely when it happened one of the things I remember hearing all the time was these were kids that didn't have any friends they were outcasts they were loners that's why they did I this feel like they say that all the time now they do. Well, I was watching an episode of Criminal Minds the other day, and there was a school shooting, and they were saying, oh, well, you know, the profile is their loners, blah, blah, blah. And I was like, that's bullshit. Yeah. <laughs> I've done some research. <laughs> and it's just, that's just not true. Um, and they weren't either. They had friends. They had each other. They had close friends. They had friends that, you know, were just sort of acquaintances that they were friendly yeah. with. And they had people they didn't like, but they weren't, Yeah, they weren't loners or outcasts. Um, 
Anyway, he also started to put on their things like instructions for causing trouble at school and, you know, do this to your teachers or do this to other students. And then he also put in descriptions of the trouble that he and his friend Klebold had been causing. So it was it was a journal. Um, 1997, he started to get even angrier and his blog reflected that. And he started, instead of just talking about general mischief that they could cause at school, he started listing all of the descriptions of weapons that he had made and acquired. Mm -hmm. um, and he started listing specific murder threats, uh, how he wanted to kill different people, who he wanted to kill, like a hit list on yeah. his blog. The blog still had... Like hardly any visitors so no it wasn't a big deal it wasn't like flagged or anything no uh -uh. i don't think anybody even knew klebold did know um which will come up in about a year uh but other than that there wasn't a whole lot of evidence that anyone did anything except maybe download levels if they played with him okay. is doom like a like a i mean not mmo but like a so okay i know what you're trying to say do you play with other people? I don't know if you could. We didn't. Okay. Because I don't remember ever playing. We, I remember, like, us taking turns playing. Like, so, I guess I'm just wondering who he was uploading these things for. Maybe other, other people, people could that... download them. Maybe. Like, I mean, that was the era of floppy disks. So maybe he could put it on a floppy disk and then you put it on your computer and open play it and it. play it in the game. Because... Hmm. That, I mean, can you imagine playing online with AOL? With dial-up, right. Ugh. Yeah, no, I don't. I, I mean, remember pausing a video to listen to a song and then, like, going and making lunch and then getting us, like, getting yeah. settled, getting a drink, letting the dog out, coming back, and then playing the song. Right. Because, like, you had, to, you had to earn it. Well, in... At this time, though, there would have been high-speed internet, like at colleges and businesses and things. There wasn't in our area, like nobody had personal high-speed internet. But yeah. when we went to school, there were the T1 lines and all that kind mm -hmm. of stuff. Mm -hmm. So, I don't know if they had... Yeah. Really is not a story about the internet. I'm just no. now thinking of all of these things. So. All right. So, back to this. Yeah. June, or June. Or January, you know, the uh, old one. <laughs> January 30th, 1998, Harris and Klebold, for whatever reason, rob a truck. I have a theory. Mm -hmm. And my theory is, I know at this time they were already stockpiling pipe bombs. Oh. And they were really into all that. And so my thought is it's probably like an electrical truck or a plumbing truck and they were stealing materials. Oh. But whatever they were doing, they get arrested. They get caught and arrested. Um, and they plead guilty. And they are sentenced to a juvenile diversion program, which included things like classes and anger management, meetings with officers, therapy. Mm -hmm. um, it was at this time that Harris got put on medication for depression and anger and suicide initially, or suicidal thoughts, yeah. obviously not suicide. Uh, initially, they prescribed him Zoloft, but he didn't like the way that it made him feel like restless and which I totally get because yeah. I have a medication that makes me feel like that. It makes me feel like I have crickets crawling in my bones. I hate it. And so they changed it to something called Luvox, which I'm not familiar with. I've never heard of it. But either way, um, they, they had the boys start journaling, which is a pretty typical thing for that kind of program or really yeah. any kind of. Yeah, I would like, say they always want you to write everything down. Yes. They, so they started journaling. Um, they had to write an apology letter to the owner of the van, which was kind of interesting because um, it wasn't until April that they had to write this apology letter. But when Harris wrote the apology letter to the van owner, it was very sincere. Okay. However, the same day he wrote in his paper journal, which I'll tell you in a minute why we switched paper journals, but he wrote in his like book journal um, an entry about the van owner and just blasted him just mm. said horrible things about Ugh. him and I should be allowed to rob him if he's stupid enough to leave his van and all this kind of stuff right and um which is very interesting because like that he's just such a psychopath he's yes. so able to fool people yeah. um and actually they both were because both of them were released from this program early because of how good they were in the program and how much change all of the adults thought they had made that's crazy so, uh, three months later, Harris writes on his blog, because he's still doing the blog at this point, mm -hmm. about a kid named Brooks Brown. 
and Brooks Brown was somebody that he had had issues with. Brooks Brown's parents, it's very hard to say this kid's name, his parents um, had been to the police already with concerns about Harris Mm -hmm. and and they were worried that their kid was going to get hurt and that he was Mm going to, you know, this kid is not right and whatever else. Um, And now... Harris is upset with him, so he writes a very specific threat on his blog and what he's going to do to this other student. Oh, God. Klebold, who maybe learned a little something in the program or maybe just isn't as much of a psychopath, tells Brown, uh, shows him this entry. and says, this is, you know, here's the website. Here's what he wrote about you. Yeah. Brown, of course, tells his parents, and they go to the police, which Klebold knew that was going to happen yeah. when he did it. And so that's why I think maybe he just either had a little, little tiny bit of a conscience, not a whole lot, mm-hmm. or he was, you know, chickening out or something. Do you think that it's actually the opposite and that he is like the worst one because he, he's not normal or a psychopath. He's a little bit of both. So then he's like hmm. trying to save people just for them to, to get, just to get in trouble. I don't know. Do you know what I'm trying to say? Yeah. Like a weird... Like, that was some sort of manipulation, Mm -hmm. like, trying to make himself look good or... Yeah. I would would maybe agree with that, except that both of these kids end up dead, which was always their plan. Yeah. So, it's not like he was hoping to get himself out of trouble. I I don't know what his motive would have been. It's like being a part of the the drama, but not being the guilty one type of thing. Like, just to be in it. Yeah, I don't, I don't know. know. Anyway, sorry, continue. Oh, no, you're fine. <laughs> um, okay, so when this happens, he goes to the police. The detective who took the statement and was in charge, his name was Michael Guerra, um, and I'm just going to go ahead and call him out because oh. he drafted an affidavit requesting a search warrant and never filed it. Oh, I, right. I don't know why. We yeah. were talking about this, David and I were talking about this yesterday, actually, about, or... I guess it wasn't yesterday, Saturday, about why, why wouldn't you just file it? Like, yeah. why, why did that just stop? What part of, you know, was he yeah. not concerned enough? Did it get lost? Did he forget? Yeah. Whatever. So um, it was never filed. If they had gotten a search warrant, they would have gone through Harris's room and they would have found all of these weapons yeah. he had been stockpiling and then writing about on and the blog. And making, right? And making and yeah. buying all kinds of things. Um and they, they didn't. Uh, they maybe couldn't have prevented things, but they certainly could have postponed. I mean, they certainly could have slowed them down. Something would have happened, yeah. which is so frustrating. So um, the police department, after all of the murders and everything happened, covered this up. They hid the fact that this was ever drafted. <laughs> 60 Minutes, two years later did find out about it, uncovered it when they yeah. were doing like their in-depth investigation or whatever. Oh, good. Um, and there was another investigation into the police department and potential cover-ups and like, could something have been done? Should something have been done? Kind of thing. Mm-hmm. Um, which I think there always are because you're looking for anybody to blame. And especially in this case, when you end up with no murderers to arrest, you know, then that's true frustrating yes i agree so after this happened the boys realized it was safer to not blog online uh right and instead they moved all of their plans and everything else into journals yeah that they were keeping that were not online where people could see them um, which seems to be the only lesson they really learn is that you shouldn't post all of these horrible things in a place where other people can see them. You should keep them yeah. private and keep on doing them. But that's like, ugh. yeah, makes me mad. <laughs> Not the lesson they were supposed to learn. Mm-hmm. So the blog comes offline. The All the descriptions of the bombs that they had made and the guns they had purchased and everything stayed online until at some point between 98 and 99, AOL gets wind of it. I don't know if it was reported or what, but mm-hmm. they, they flag it and they delete the site. And then after yeah. that, there's nothing. The other thing that they did, they started making videos 
And so between their videos and journals, they documented things like all of their plans. They had more than just their school shooting plan. They had they had played around with other ideas like hijacking a plane, um, running away to Mexico. Their plane plan is actually terrifying because it involved hijacking a plane at the Denver International Airport and then flying to New York and crashing it into a building. Oh, my God. Right? Um, but they also did include details about the school shooting that they were planning. Ugh. So here is the plan as they thought of it. Their plan was on April 20th, which was a Tuesday, 1999, um, at Columbine in Jefferson County, Colorado. They were going to plan and execute an attack that rivaled the Oklahoma City bombing. So their goal was not to get back at any specific group. It wasn't to, you know take revenge against some person who had wronged them it was to get a lot of attention and be famous so even though <laughs> the rest of this didn't work quite as planned yeah. they they did end up meeting their goal mm -hmm. so their original plan was they were going to start a fire in like a it was offsite it was off campus a couple of miles in the opposite direction so there was campus and then um a little bit south of that like a mile south of that was the fire station and then two miles south of that was this field this area oh. and they were going to set off a bomb and create a fire and then all of the emergency response people in this town would go there to take care of that fire and they wouldn't go to the school yeah. they would be farther away so then at the school, they had some propane tanks that they had converted into bombs that were around the cafeteria or in the cafeteria. Um, and I couldn't tell if they were part of the school, like they were school propane tanks that they had somehow rigged to be bombs or if they had brought, brought the tanks in. Neither one of those makes sense to me. But I didn't do enough research to find out which one it was. It doesn't really matter because I think those... I just assumed the first time you told me that it was the school's propane tanks because it was by I the cafeteria. Too. Right. Which so. seems like a reasonable place for propane tanks. I think people would definitely notice you bringing in propane tanks, let right. alone messing with them. Right. Which no one seemed to do. But they seemed to be in the cafeteria, not outside of the cafeteria. Oh, that's dumb. Right. So, so it's not like a heating propane tank. So, I don't... A cooking? Maybe. Yeah. Either way, they were going to um, convert those into bombs and blow them up in the cafeteria during the busiest lunch of the day because they did lunch in shifts. And that was going to kill just a ton of people. And then anybody, they were going to go back outside. So they had set these on a timer as well, the firebomb oh. to divert attention away from the school. Mm -hmm. And then also these propane tanks were on timers. They were going to hang out outside and kill everybody running out of the doors. And then they had put bombs in their cars Oh, they also had 99 other explosives, like <laughs> pipe bombs and that kind of thing that they were going to throw into the school just to claim as many lives as humanly possible. Um, but they would put some bombs in their cars that they were hoping they could trigger to blow up at the right time so that once emergency personnel did make it back to the school, they could hurt them as mm -hmm. well. These are good kids. Yeah. And then, of course, the final step of their plan was suicide. Tuesday morning... They start the firebomb. It's in a field. Um, and it was set to explode at 11.14 a.m. It didn't work. So this was where their plan started to go wrong. Because it turns out that as smart as these two kids must have been, and as well planned as everything was, they sucked at bomb making. And yet. And yet. <laughs> And so it didn't go off all of the way. It just caused a small fire. And so when the fire department got there, it took them no time to put it out. Mm -hmm. So they weren't busy when the rest of everything started. Yeah. So they put the bombs in their cars as well. Um, and they set those to go off at noon. So the little bomb was set to explode at 1114. They figured that it would take about 45 minutes for them to cause enough trouble that somebody would call for police. Police would get there and... They could be blown up at, yeah. at noon, apparently. Yeah. Um, 30 minutes before everything started, they made a video for their friends and their families saying goodbye and apologizing, even though obviously they weren't sorry because yeah, they're they about to do it. Right. <sighs> yeah. I almost would be interested in watching that video. Just, I wonder how 
I bet it would be terrifying. I bet I'd have nightmares. Yeah. So they try to set off the propane bombs, which don't go off um, near the cafeteria. And then they head back out to their cars. Before, so then they're at their cars and they're waiting for this to explode. It doesn't happen. So at some point they realize that their bombs are not going to go off and it's their plan is not working. And they decide that they are just going to head back to the school and they're just going to, you know, sort of be flexible about this and just shoot people. They were very heavily armed with other things, like all of their pipe bombs that they were carrying and they each had multiple weapons. Um, So they ran back to the school um, at like 1119. So about five minutes after their first bomb went off off site. And there were two students that were sitting outside having lunch, Rachel Scott and Richard Castaldo. And they... So they were between where the, the boys were parked in the school. So as they're running up, Castaldo watches one of the boys, probably Harris, throw a pipe bomb. He It doesn't really go off because, like I said, crappy bomb makers. Mm-hmm. So they think that it's maybe a senior prank and they don't take it seriously. But at that point, Eric yells, go, go, go. And they start running toward the school. They shoot at both Scott and Castaldo. Scott gets killed instantly. Castaldo is shot eight times but is just paralyzed and passes out, mm. which is almost sadder in a lot of ways. can't imagine living with all of that. Yeah. Harris takes off his trench coat. He runs down the west staircase. He manages to shoot three more students. Um, They're all shot and wounded, but not killed. One of the teachers is Dave Sanders. He's a computer and business teacher and a coach. He thinks... um, that this is not a senior prank. Most of the people, even even once the shooting had started and the bombs had not quite gone off, but there had been some loud noises, people are still thinking that this is like a prank or some weird. That's so crazy. Right. But at the same time, before this happened, maybe even after this happened, if if something like, I don't know that I would have thought it was like, real either. Yeah. Like, this doesn't happen, really. Right. It might have just been shock. So you're just like, no. Oh. Right. Well, and I don't know, I mean, these two kids were not, like, super popular or anything else, but they definitely had friends. They were troublemakers, but I don't know that anyone would have thought, oh, yeah, they're here to kill everybody. Yeah. Necessarily. (sighs) Anyway, Dave Sanders realizes that actually it's not a prank, um, that it's an attack, that people are actually getting hurt. So he's the first one to notice that. So they come in, they shoot, they uh, shoot five students that are sitting, or shoot at five students sitting on the grass outside. One of them is hit a couple of times, one of the, but he gets away. One of them gets hit and he falls down and pretends to be dead, but isn't actually dead. And the other three don't get hit at all. They run away. Um, so Klebold walks down the stairs into the cafeteria. He... Um, sees Kirkland so Kirkland is one of the students that they shot but didn't die and he's on the ground and he's you know calling out for help and Klebold is like oh yeah I'll help you and shoots and kills him (sighs) so this kind of just goes on in the same theme for a really long time yeah they run around the school they go into the cafeteria um and they go up and down staircases and they shoot at people uh and a lot of times they hit and kill people um They check on the bombs. They can't ever get the propane bombs to go off. They throw a bunch of pipe bombs, most of which also don't go off. Um, At one point, Patty Nelson, who's an art teacher, is walking down the hall, and she sees them. And at first, she thinks it's a prank, but then they shoot at her and, like, shatter glass, and she realizes this is a a real thing. She runs into the library, which is where most of the story takes place, and she calls 911. And she hides under a desk and stays on the phone the rest of the time. And so some of what we know, uh, most of it is from students and witnesses and their journals and everything else. But some of what we know is from the 911 call because you can hear in the background when the boys finally make it to the library Mm. that, you know, they can hear what they're they're doing. That'd be terrifying to hear. No kidding. I can't imagine being like the 911 operator. Because even once the police arrive, she's still on the phone Mm -hmm. with 911. And that person just had to have felt so helpless. So there's... There's killing all over the school. The police do eventually arrive. There are multiple times when the police and Klebold and Harris are firing back at each other. They never manage to hit one another. Um, 
which is kind of a shame because as horrible as it is to wish that somebody managed to hit and kill a child, I wish they'd hit and killed the, the children. The mass murderers. Right. They're, I mean, at this point, they're, they're, they're just not. evil, right? Yeah, they're not children. So um, the worst parts of the attack take place in the library. Uh, that's where they do the most damage and spend the, mo- the most time. They go in. They There are so many students packed into this library. There are 50-some-odd students in there. And they're trying to hide under desks. And they're trying to stay out of sight. And there, there are so many they can't all fit. And so there are students who are, you know, sitting next to the desk and all their friends are underneath. And they... Um, they go around and they shoot people and they taunt them and they get in their faces yeah. and they, it's just absolutely horrible. And I, I know I went through it last time and kind of named everybody and called everybody out and I don't want to not give time to the victims, but at the same time, it, yeah, the, it was hard to listen to the first time when you were saying it, it was hard to read. The yeah, first it's, it's very difficult. And I also feel like it's something with readily available information. Yeah. And you can go and look up all of the the sadness. We talked a little bit about the girl and the book that was the She Said Yes book. And oh, yeah. The whole, like, yeah, Christian I'd... student martyrdom thing last time. And I do, actually, I, I would like to talk about that just because it makes me really mad. And this is apparently what our episode is about this time. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Things that make me really mad. Yeah. Um, so there was one student that was hiding under a desk and... Um, They got down in her face and they asked her if she believed in God. And the story that I heard as a student, actually, this is this is what brought this up earlier when I was thinking about it. So the story I heard as a student and there was even a book written to the effect was that when they asked her if she believed in God, she said yes. And then they shot her. And that became this thing at some mm-hmm. churches, and mine was definitely one of them, yeah. where it was like, that is the best thing you could possibly do, is to be so sure you know, of your faith that you are willing to die just to get the chance to say that you have faith, right? And that was like yeah. the highest you know, thing that you could do, um, which is horrible. Yeah. That is a terrible thing to tell any person, but especially a teenager. Mm. Also, it's a lie because that's not what happened at all. Um, This particular student, her name was Cassie, and I've lost her last name. She didn't respond to them at all. Um, She didn't talk to, like, Harris may have asked her that question, and she may have been praying beforehand, but she never had any sort of interaction with them. Mm -hmm. And so... It was just a fabrication. It was yeah. just something that somebody came up with. Um, but the reason that, that that I was thinking about that today was because when I was a senior and a very different person than I am now, we did – have you ever – the International Day of Prayer, the Pray Around the Pole thing. Did you guys ever do that or did anybody at the school do that when you were there? I don't know. Not that I remember. It used to be – and I don't know where it started or what the history is, but for us it was this – it's this one day a year – when all the students are supposed to go outside and stand around the flagpole and pray at school in the morning on this one day. And we would have people from church come and like it was this big event, right? And Jordan's rolling her eyes so hard her whole head flipped back. Oh, okay. <laughs> well, we had to outdo that. So we did it every single morning all year long. Okay. And at one point after college, so this was my senior year. So it was like, this happened the spring of my junior year, so almost mm-hmm. at the end of the school year. So senior year, we had students who apparently made threats, and I don't know how anyone discovered them or whatever, but we actually had county sheriff's deputies come and stand outside around us because they had threatened to kill us. And in our minds, we were like, wow, so that means that what we're doing is really, really good, and we're going to risk our yeah. lives and continue to do which I- No. It's making me so mad I don't have words. Yeah. (laughs) This was that adults would let students believe that. Do that, right? And not be like, hey, you know what? Actually, this might be stupid. I'll be like, I believe in God and all, but I'm going to sit my ass inside and not be a lamb to the slaughter. So, for no purpose whatsoever. Just to say I was a believer. No, I'd rather be alive to tell you, not, not die because of it. Right. I don't know. So, anyway, Mm -hmm. um, 
they go around they kill a whole bunch of people they um at the very end they try to ignite the propane tanks again and are still unsuccessful they actually chuck a molotov cocktail at it still still didn't work still didn't work i mean propane tanks are designed to not explode so it's not that surprising that it didn't work right but still um they did manage to ignite some fuel which was then put out by a sprinkler system immediately so it <laughs> did no damage whatsoever they went around the school they were all at this point there was sort of a lockdown going on except that at this point in history there was no such thing as a lockdown because even though school shootings had happened in the past nobody planned yeah. for this mm -hmm. And so everybody was locked in their classrooms and they were they were wandering down the halls, Klebold and Harris, and looking in and making eye contact with students. And yeah. They didn't kill anyone during all of that, but they just at this point just wanted to spread fear and terror. Mm -hmm. um, at one point, somebody overheard Klebold saying that he was bored and maybe they should stop shooting people and just walk around and stab them, <sighs> um, which, of course, my extensive criminal minds knowledge of law enforcement and profiling yeah. and whatever else is like well yeah because shooting is not very personal and now you know that yeah. thrill is worn off and they want to get closer and so at 1208 um they've been out of the library where they did most of the killing for 30 minutes and they decide they're done and they're going to carry out the last part of their plan, which was suicide. Mm -hmm. And the rumor, which is completely unsubstantiated, was that they like counted down. They were like, one, two. Well, that's not counting down. It's counting up. One, two, three. And then kill, killed themselves together. Um, but either way, Harris took a shotgun, put it in the roof of his mouth and fired and killed himself. Klebold put a gun, like a handgun, to his temple and killed himself that way. Um it was about this time that SWAT was there. They started taking wounded students away. They started going into the school. Yeah. And it, I mean, it was over at that point anyway. So all of that horribleness came to an end. Um, afterward, there were a bunch of changes in policies. Mm -hmm. There was the uncovering of the draft of the affidavit that never got filed. Which is just insane. Yep. There were books that were written, obviously. There was a 60 Minutes investigation. Um, a couple of the people that sold these children handguns were actually arrested. Mm. Um, instead of it just being a totally okay thing to do like it seems <laughs> to be at the moment. Um, there were a bunch of... The FBI came up with a bunch of policies and procedures for school shootings, which, of course, work wonderfully because we never have this kind of issue anymore. Ever. Um, and mostly it was just a bunch of tragedy and heartache and horribleness. Yeah. yeah. Um, so there were definitely theories about why they did it. And, of course, the only thing that we know for sure is that they wanted to make a big splash and have everybody know them. Really, really, that was Harris that wanted yeah. to do that. Um, there was a psychiatrist that evaluated them or evaluated their actions later and essentially diagnosed Harris as a psychopath and well. said, you know, he, he just wanted to go in and kill as many people as he could. And if he died, whatever. Um, Klebold, on the other hand, wanted to die. And if he killed people along the way, that was okay with him too. Yeah. So they were a little bit opposite in their motives. But um, things like video games were blamed as they always are. Which is so dumb. Yep. Everyone told everyone else that they were loners and outcasts and that those type of people were dangerous and that by and and we have definitely learned that that is exactly what's happening, right? Because that whole walk up, not out thing. It's so dumb. Oh, my God. I have so much to say about that. <laughs> I hate it so much. Um, but of course, we know that that was not the case. Um, they blamed medication and giving children essentially or you know people who have not fully developed who are not adults adult antidepressants but I don't know that it would have made any difference they did find medication or the correct levels of medication in Harris's blood afterwards so he yeah. had been taking his medication properly yes any sort of mental and health yeah. meds are a yeah. little hit or miss mm -hmm. but 
They blamed, of course, like goth culture and all of that kind of stuff. I also hate when people attack goth culture because I think it's really cool. And I always wanted to do it. I was not cool enough to be goth. Me neither. That's why I was like, I can never pull that off. Well, and the really frustrating part about that, too, is fine, you know, we could have that discussion, except they didn't belong to that group. No, they didn't. All of these or things. Or the trench that, coat mafia, right? Yeah, which was yeah. like their school's thing. Yeah. 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 Not, that wasn't, that, that wasn't, wasn't them. true. Yeah. <laughs> None of this was true for them. There was definitely. They were like two crazy kids. They were. They were. And they definitely had mental health issues, mm-hmm. but that does not make people into murderers. No. Um, and they definitely were not closely supervised enough, but that does not turn people into murderers. No. Nope. And there were definitely people, <laughs> Jordan points it herself. Just kidding. Um, yeah. There were definitely people that they didn't like. Again, I feel like everybody goes to school and has at least one person they do not like. Right. But normal people don't wake up and be like, you know what? I'm going to kill that one person I don't like. Right. And random other people along the way. Right. It's as many people as I possibly can yeah. so I can be as famous as this other no mass murderer. No one does that who is sane. No. No. It doesn't matter where you are or your influence. No. It, that's not it. Right. Video games are not making kids do this. No. Or movies, which is my other favorite thing. Right. I'm like, how? Mm-hmm. I've played the worst video games ever and watched the worst movies, and it does not make me want to do that. Well, right. And there have been people uh, that I've hated that I, I have this sort of knee-jerk reaction to be like, well, I hope they suffer. But I, I wouldn't kill them. No. I wouldn't even consider it. Because I just want not... them to, like, always trip on their like step shoelaces. on a Lego, right? Yeah, right. I or like every time we sit down, the remote's on the other side of the room, like something inconvenient. inconvenient. <laughs> That's it, because you inconvenient, like are inconvenient me. You, you are an inconvenience <laughs> to me. That's what it is. I yes, I agree. So, um, the, one of the parts that got totally cut out when we recorded this last time was that stupid Facebook meme that made me so mad that I'm oh, shaking yeah. at the moment talking about it. Um, the whole. <sighs> Um, don't, so there's so many versions. Yeah. But uh, I mean, border, I mean, not, I don't know. It's like, don't walk out for the student protest. Because, right. Which is over now, but still. yes, but you should just walk up to someone who yep. you don't know and make a new friend. And at the end it has circled, just be nice. Yes. And then there's the edited version. It's yes. like. No, no, do what you're going to do. How dare anybody victim blame? Yeah, because what that is telling people and guys, this is our opinions, but no, 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 it's not even it's fact. uh, Yeah, (laughs) like (laughs) it's I wish uh, I would. No, okay, this is gonna come out wrong. So you might edit this out. I wish someone (laughs) from a school shooting because there are plenty to pick from Mm -hmm. would say. I know that so-and-so was nice to every single person that they met, and yet they were killed. Well, right. Like, so being nice is not enough for someone who's crazy and has a motive, and they're going to do it anyways. No, it's not. That's it. And if you say you shouldn't... You shouldn't walk out. You shouldn't protest. You shouldn't, you know, make your opinions about guns known. Mm -hmm. Instead, you should be nice to the people around you. Mm -hmm. Or even if you take away the first part and you just say, you should be nice to the people around you. You should go up to that kid that nobody talks to and befriend them and blah, blah, blah. It is great to be nice. It really is. But the two other messages with that are, one, if you're not nice to them and they kill you, it's totally your fault. And yeah. if those kids in that shooting had been nicer, then they wouldn't have gotten shot mm-hmm. at. Which at is random. Oh, it's not like- okay. <laughs> the other message is those kids who are quiet, who don't socialize as much as the extroverts, are dangerous. Are dangerous. Yeah, I know. They're going to kill you if you're not nice to mm-hmm. them. Those are not okay things to say to anybody, yeah. especially children. What the fuck uh, are people thinking? Yeah, I just... I'm livid. I understand. And this is like, I have two things to say. The first one is 
uh, I was I always watch Gilmore Girls because it's just on and I keep it on and it's just whatever. <laughs> you watch Gilmore Girls a, a lot. lot. <laughs> I love it. But there was an episode that Rory went to a private school and she didn't socialize with anyone. She yeah. sat alone at lunch. She listened to her music and pl- read a book and just was always by herself. So then the teacher started getting concerned because she was always by herself. So then she was like, you don't know my life. I go home. I have a boyfriend. My mom and I are abnormally close, attached to the hip. Right. I have a best friend I've known since I was four. Like the whole town is my friend you don't know me right and i was like that's what they're talking about that's yeah. what because she wanted to read and sit alone at lunch she was a threat right and i was like oh my gosh and then the other thing they were talking about kids protesting for stricter gun laws yeah and trevor noah did you see his thing he said because I, I don't even know which politician it was but said that you know, kids aren't old enough to be making these types of decisions on laws. <laughs> and he said, if kids are old enough to be getting shot in schools, they're old enough to make these laws. Like, they're old right. enough to make a change. And I was like, he was like, no, if they're old enough to be getting shot at, they're old enough to be having something to say about not getting shot at. Yeah. Like, and I was like, yeah. And I love Trevor Noah. Well, uh, I don't even think you have to be any age to have an opinion on about being shot at. Right. That's all. That's right. all it is. <laughs> right. Well, uh, I would very much like to not be shot at anywhere right. I go. I would like, yeah. Uh, anywhere I go. Movie yeah. theater, church, school, anywhere I go. <laughs> I well, would like to know I'm not going to be shot at. Yeah. That's all. Right. I, I feel like. And you know what? Smiling at a kid who doesn't want to socialize with other people. Mm-hmm. Not going to change. I was whether friends or not with a kid at. in school. And he was in David's class when I was in David's class. And everyone would say oh, he'd be the one to do it. And I was like, how? dare you guys yeah. say that right and then i mean unless you've seen him killing small animals then that's okay but right. no just because he <laughs> was an outcast and everyone was bullying him and he'd rather keep to himself and do his shit and leave right and then i just remember someone being like if anyone were to come here and do that it would be him because we had like a threat or something right and they've I've had in- threats at that high school this past week yeah which apparently have all been dealt with. These are finger air quotes yeah. going on here. It was like here, over but... eight or something. It yep. was I was yep. on. Mm-hmm. But yeah, and I was just like, this is what's wrong with people. It's because they're pinpointing people and saying he'd be the one to do it. Right. I was like, like, no. and and no, he wouldn't. Not any more no. likely than anyone else. And I thought he was really cool. Yeah, and he was just he was just weird. Whatever. Everybody's weird. Yeah. I was, I was like, definitely weird. I dressed I mean, as a cloud occasionally at school. A cloud? A cloud. It's a long story. Okay. Well, this kid wore a gas mask to school one time. And I said... Oh, so he's like my kid. Yeah. So I said, hey, if there's anything I should know, you'd let me know, right? <laughs> and he said, yeah. And I was like, all right. Have a good day. <laughs> like, then we're cool. You just want to wear like, a gas mask. I was like, what do you know today? that I don't know? Like, what's going on? There's a leak. <laughs> yeah. So I was like, you know something I don't? <laughs> you got to let me know these things. But yeah, uh, anyway... I, it it makes me so 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 mad it makes me mad that you can go out and buy these weapons it makes me mad when my aunt posts shit like well isn't walmart and dicks refusing to sell weapons to people under 21 the same thing as christian bakers refusing to sell cakes to gay couples like it's just your opinion bullshit no people Um, are dying right dying dying and murdered everyone, everyone turns 21 it's not a discrimination thing <laughs> unless you get shot by a school shooter yeah and then you don't have the chance to turn 21 it just oh my god it makes me so so mad and it's been one of those things that i even almost responded to something today on facebook that was going back to you know the it's 14th to the whole walkout hard thing. not to be triggered i just can't mm-hmm. and i know that it won't make any nothing that I no. post or respond and to that's on the Facebook worst is going to make any difference. I know that. That's why I haven't. Because I was like, no, it's just going to go right over their head. It They're is. just going to be like, no, no, no. My thoughts are the correct thoughts. Blah blah right. blah. blah. But I, but I don't know what to do. And that mm-hmm. might make me the maddest. Because yeah. yes, we're recording this episode and ranting for an hour about how pissed off we are. Yeah. I don't know. I feel like this goes out to an audience who feels the same way or stopped listening a long time ago. Yeah. Um, it's, I don't know. I don't, I I don't know what there is to do. Um, except, oh my God, I'm going to be voting very, very, very carefully and very, very, very often. Yeah. Um, but I agree. I, I am very glad that Walmart and Dix and, um, uh, Delta and and all of these places, right. They're all at least 
trying to do something and honestly they have the money and the power so you know what I'm glad someone is um anyway yeah I'm gonna take a deep breath because you have a story you have a story that's much more enjoyable and it should get a few laughs and um and she's drinking her tea for dramatic effect (laughs) and it's about a cat oh I'm glad yeah so this is about and supposedly this cat is like semi-famous I had never heard of him but if you have like semi-famous cat yeah so well he wasn't famous but it's like was it, what was it uh, notable or something like that or i don't know it was like a step under famous like not quite famous but he's, notable. So he's like a c-lister <laughs> yeah i'm like okay <laughs> but um <laughs> c cat <laughs> okay. oh god no, i know right. we're on track now our last listener just turned it off oh uh, well your mom's still listening <laughs> she's like oh cat i'm here she doesn't count <laughs> no <laughs> Thanks, Mom. Okay, so this is about a klepto cat. Ooh. Oh, my God, I know this story. Yeah, okay. So I, I have, like, very specific details on everything. Oh, I'm so excited so about this story. So his name is Dusty, and he's a domestic snowshoe cat, which are really pretty, if you want to look one up. I do want to look one up. Um, they kind of look like Yako, but, like, little different markings. Very cute. So he became popular around 2011. And he even went on the late night show with David Letterman. He's so pretty. Right? I was like, because this one has a very, very light tan. So he's like grumpy cat. Yeah. Yeah. Except pretty. Yes. And not, and grumpy. not grumpy. So he was even a guest on the David Letterman show. Okay. That's is, awesome. Yeah. So Dusty, I said the cutest baby cat, the cutest um, baby. has stolen hundreds of items. Ooh. In his one neighborhood in San Mateo, California. Okay. So he started this bad behavior around two years old. <laughs> so they were like, oh, yeah, the first two years of his life were rather boring. And as soon as it was like 2008, he started coming back and um, we'd go out at night and they'd start noticing weird household items that weren't theirs in weird places in their house. It's like my ferret that I had for a oh second. Oh, my God. <laughs> She for would steal second. water bottles. Oh my and gosh! All kinds. Your, I remember your ferret. That was you had a, Zipporah. Yes, Zippy. She because it was like so bad. Sarah and I were on your couch, and it was like rolling noodle style under the couch, and we we're like, yes. ah! and it was gone. But that was a good ferret. <laughs> okay, sorry. Go ahead. Just for the rolling noodle, <laughs> noodle part. Okay, so they started noticing weird items in the house. That so they were. I mean, I'm sure you're kind of like. Did I put that there? Is that even ours? Like, what? Where did this come from? Mm-hmm. Do they have any kids? Like, no, they didn't they mention. They knew it was the cat. Yeah, I, they were. I, I'm i sorry if they weren't, but I think they were an older couple. So they just adopted a cat. And, gotcha. Um, so I didn't see any kids. But okay. in February 2011, <laughs> Animal Planet actually did a piece on this cat. Oh, really? And it's on like a must love cat show that they did before. Um, So to like catch him, they set up these night vision cameras that went off like motion sensor. Uh huh. And they waited like, I think they said two weeks or something. It was like a long time to catch him. So then they went back and watched all the footage and it was really funny because one of them, he, it's such a big item that he's waddling over it trying to walk. Oh <laughs> but so I have an exact list of what he's stolen over his life. All of it? All of it. Oh my God. This is going to so, take like 16 hours. So on, <laughs> right? So on the footage, the one thing I saw was a bra. He was, he stole someone's bra Oh my gosh. and like a car wash sponge. Someone out there is like calling the cops. Somebody broke into my oh, no. backyard and oh, stole my wait. underwear. Oh, just- and- <laughs> <laughs> That's so funny. So this is a, a list of stuff he has taken over his time. Uh, so 16 car wash mitts. Um, oh, what? <laughs> that six, this is where it starts. It gets so much worse. Seven sponges, 213 dish towels. So these could be the same exact dish towel over and over and over again. Like because somebody's just not learning their lesson? I think they do after, uh, you know, they start losing their mind. Because it's like, <laughs> is he taking the one sock that I'm never going to find? Oh and then the, God, the dryers are not eating the socks. It's, it's the, the, cat. the cat. So um, let's see. Seven washcloths, five towels. So that's like why I'm like bigger than towels? him. 
Oh, he takes crazy stuff. Um, 18 shoes. Tw- <laughs> yes. 73 socks. Wow. 100 gloves, a pair of mittens, three aprons, 40 balls of all varieties. Um, four pairs of underwear, one dog collar, which I was like, how did he get that? I'm wondering how he got a lot of these. I assume it's like clothes drying. Yeah. yeah. Like, like, like out on a line or something like that. Uh, six rubber toys, kind of like dog toys and stuff uh-huh. like that. One blanket. Can you imagine a cat dragging a blanket? I mean, it's funny. <laughs> Three leg warmers. It's not the 80s, but hey, they're still around. Um, and in California, like, we are not gold. Maybe um, they were baby leg warmers. Maybe. My kids had those. So, let's see. Two Frisbees, one golf club head cover. Oh, okay. One safety mask. <laughs> yeah, right. Uh, two mesh bags, one bag of water balloons, uh, one Someone pair of pajama pants, eight bathing suits, just to name a few. There was more, and I stopped writing. Holy So cow. I think it was over like 600 things. And this wow. was, I'm sure it was over like years. But it was, I was watching this video to the point where the neighborhood just knows, like, don't leave anything out because he'll take it. Well, that's what I was going to say. Some of those yeah. things I totally get. The dog bones. Mm-hmm. The- so they started going to their house to check and be like, did Dusty take this? Before they like called it stolen or gave up looking for it. Oh they would come God. to the house and then the woman would, it was like the craziest, she had like a wall of stuff that he had taken. <laughs> but you should have saw a model with this stuff. It was like dragging under him and he had his legs spread out as far as he could and his little mouth was trying to hold it to like drag this blanket, towel, whatever it was thing. And then okay. he has a bra and a little sponge. So That's this hilarious. woman was talking to her kids and she was like, don't leave your shoes outside. You know, Dusty's going to take it. Like, it's just <laughs> the thing. Like, Dusty's going to take it. Don't leave it outside. He's steal it. So, no, no one called the cops on him and he has not been charged. So what do you think makes a cat into a thief? Want to do, I, I don't know. It's not like he's hunting unless he's no. really bad at hunting and he thinks he's doing a good job and he's bringing, bringing it to it his back. owners and like. Thought you needed this. Right. Here's a pair of underwear. Here's a bra. <laughs> right? Our ferret would steal water bottles and hide them under things. Like That's there was funny. a place in our pantry under a shelf and he would drag it or she would drag it in there and mm-hmm. put it under the shelf. That's but funny. That. Yeah. And, and hundreds. There, of there stuff. were some things on that list that I'm like, okay, those, those would be sitting around I started outside. thinking maybe he's slipping in windows because there's some oh, things okay. I'm like. Yeah, maybe so. Because I'm sure it's or really like nice dog weather. Or cat door yeah, or whatever uh, else. So I think it was that. That That's great. Yeah. <laughs> I know. I like how Animal Planet came and did a piece on him because it was that great. And he was right? on the David Letterman show. <laughs> that's that's pretty awesome, actually. I'm glad that everybody has a good sense of humor about it, too. Because I could definitely yeah. see somebody being like, Keep you your know. cat away. It's like, right. You have to lock it inside. and Yeah. Like, you can't do that with cats. They just don't listen. No, and they they either like to be inside or outside, and then mm-hmm. they're miserable otherwise. Yep. Um, all right, so I'm trying to think of what Dusty would steal from our house, and I'm looking on my back deck, and it's a little embarrassing. So maybe we won't list all of the things oh he could gosh. steal from us. But That's there is at least a fish tank and a towel out there. I think he would take the towel. He would definitely the take the towel. fish tank would be a little hard to move. But he could get stuff out. Like, it's got all the plants oh, and stuff yeah. still in it. He could Maybe. get that stuff out. It's a very small There was, like, tank. other items that I just was like, I don't even know. I forget what it was. I time. don't own half the things on that list. I just, <laughs> I just thought it was so funny that he has these things that are much bigger than him. Right. And he's dragging them home. That is great yep that's a great way to end this yes. episode because so. <laughs> it was a rough one mm-hmm. um oh i really want to see dusty now and i need a cat that looks like that too oh, oh my very cute. goodness if we have any listeners left mm-hmm. they should definitely get in touch with us um and they can do that on facebook we have a group and a page yeah and if you come join or like either one we will let you into our oh. super secret awesome club Oh, we have a shout out to yes. do. Yes. Oh my God, I feel so terrible. Okay. No, I I said to myself, I need to remember that, but then you said Facebook and it reminded me. Oh, good. Let's see. Jamie Prater. Sorry, I was just looking at the picture. I don't know what the preferred pronouns are, because the picture is not of a person. 
I was going to say, oh, my God, Jordan, way to call somebody out. <laughs> no, it's just not of a person. Okay. okay, I'm just going to say it's like hey, a cat sorry, or something. Jamie, I just, you know, unisex names. Hey, right here, Jordan, all the time. My diploma said Mr. So, hey, um, <laughs> <laughs> your post was super cute. And it, I was like, oh. but we just want to give you a shout out. And thanks for posting or thanks for joining. And then thanks for posting something so nice. And. We're glad that you like this episode, hopefully, because <laughs> if you didn't listen, then you're not going to hear your shout out. Um, so it took me a minute to to think of, of where Jamie had posted, um, but I was going to get on and then my phone wouldn't go on Facebook the other day, but you, so when Jamie requested oh, to I be was part so of our fast. group, you were so, because it I was only already took me on about my 10 phone. seconds to get on there. I, mean, I was, was already on my phone. That's why I said, boop, boop, boop. It was accepted. Insane. It was insane because it, uh, 10 seconds max is how long it took me to oh, get yeah. to that screen. And it was already done. It's like, uh, oh, what is it? We were Western fighting draw. over you, Jamie. <laughs> when they like take the steps <laughs> the and they turn around yeah. like, pew, really yeah. quick. That's what yeah. it was. But we just, we didn't announce it. Apparently, we uh, have no lives. No, we're just really excited. Well, I was just already on my phone, and I saw it, and I was like, <gasps> and then I was like, except, quick. We also have to shout out M. Gillum. Yes. So M. Emma M. Gillum um, has decided that she loves us so much A that she's, much. she's going to support us even more on Patreon. So, so she actually nice. has a super special present headed her way, yes. which will arrive after this episode comes out, so like by at least a week because it takes a little time to ship from here to Australia. <laughs> so. Totally coming to visit. No kidding. Have us over. Mm-hmm. Um, okay. So Facebook is definitely a thing. Patreon is definitely a thing. We're also mm-hmm. on Twitter and Instagram, or you can email us at crimecrazypodcast at gmail.com. Yeah. Or just go to our website. And then you can click all the links. Yeah. And see all the pictures. I'm probably going to post this cute cat up there this time. Yeah. So anyway. Um, I think that's all I have. Don't forget to rate us on iTunes mm-hmm. or any podcasting app. And leave a review somewhere. And leave a review, definitely. Yep. And then we will give you a shout out. Mm-hmm. Or you can just come chat to us. We'll give you a shout out that way, too. Yeah. Um, and so that's it from me. What else would you like to say? Uh, do not end up on next week's episode. Even if you are a cute cat who you steals can't. people's underwear, it's not cool. Nope. Okay. That's People like, need that. Yeah. Yeah. It's really, really invasive of their privacy. People need their pants. It's true. (laughs) Have a great week. (laughs) 